Hi, my name is Jim Grant. I'm here at the Bilderberg Fringe Festival protest. We had a comedy night here. It's fantastic. I'd like to thank all the organisers. I'd like to thank all the alternative media for putting the Bilderberg Fringe on the agenda. Um, if you want to know more about my work, I'm a comedian. I run a radio show. It's called Beyond the News. You can find us at beyondthenews.co.uk. And we've also got a news site there, collation of mainstream media sources. It's like a beginner's guide to the, the new world order. Um, and I'm here to tell you about the official version of 9-11, not mine. It goes a little something like this. The official version of 9-11 was directed by a beardy guy from a cave in Afghanistan. 19 hard-drinking, coke-snorting, devout Muslims enjoy lap dances before their mission to meet Allah. Using nothing more than craft knives, they overpower cabin crew, passengers, pilots on four planes, and hang over or not, they manage to give the world's most sophisticated air defence system the slip, unfazed by leaving their how-to-fly-a-passenger-jet guide in the car at the airport. They master the controls in no time and score direct hits on two towers, some all causing three to collapse completely. Our masterminds even manage to overpower the odd law of physics or two, and the world watches in awe as the still-framed buildings fall symmetrically through their own mass at free fall speed for the first time in history. Despite all their dastardly cunning, their stupidity, they gave away their identity by using explosion and fireproof passports, which survived the fireball undamaged and fall to the ground, only to be discovered by the incredible crime-fighting sleuths at the FBI. Meanwhile, down in Washington, Hanny Hanger, having previously funked two-man Cessna flying school, gets carried away with all the success of the day and suddenly finds incredible abilities behind the controls of a Boeing. Instead of flying straight down to the large roof area of the Pentagon, he decides to show off a little. Executing an incredible 270-degree downward spiral, he levels off to the ground to the low facade of the world's most heavily defended building, all without a single shot being fired or ruining that nicely mowed lawn. And all at a speed just too fast for modern equipment to capture on video, despite 85 different pieces of camera footage the NSA admits they will keep but not release due to national security. Later in the skies above Pennsylvania, so desperate to talk to loved ones before their imminent deaths, some passengers use sheer willpower to connect mobile calls that otherwise would not be possible until several years later. And following a heroic attempt by some to retake control of Flight 93, it crashes into a Shanksville field, leaving no trace of engines fuelage or occupants, except of course for the standard issue Muslim terrorists bandana. Further south in Florida, President Bush, the brave commander-in-chief, continues to read My Pet Goat to a class full of primary school children, shrugging off the obvious possibility that his life could be in imminent danger. There's no edit, this is real media, folks. In New York, World Trade Center leaseholder Larry Silverstein blesses his own foresight in ensuring the buildings against terrorist attacks only six weeks previously. While back in Washington, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld and Paul Wolfowitz shake their heads in disbelief at their own luck in getting the new Pearl Harbor catalyzing event that they've so desired to pursue their agenda of world domination. And finally, not to be disturbed too much by reports of their own deaths, at least seven of our 19 suicide, hack suicide hijackers turn up alive and kicking in mainstream media reports. <laughs> we can trust those guys, all right? This all happens after Cheney and Bush create a plan in 1992, released in official government documents depicting those exact events are required to get through Patriot Act-style legislation they soon brought in. The Transport Secretary tells the 9-11 Commission the Vice President gave the order to Norad to stand down and not to fire at any planes, even after the World Trade Center was hit. His testimony is censored from the official commission, as is the evidence from forensic scientists who found traces of explosives in debris of the World Trade Center. Most of the debris was ta then taken away by the military immediately, which is in its itself a legal disturbance of a crime scene. The official report then is drawn up leaving out critical evidence so much so that six out of the ten authors say they don't even agree with all of it and some call it even a whitewash, as do 1500 pro-architects. And if you don't believe this, you're weird. And I just wanted to say that uh, all of us together, by spreading the truth, seeking the truth, we can peacefully and lawfully bring about a better world full of peace and love. Thank you. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.